the purpose of part 7 of the digestive system beginning on page 866 is to pick up some details from the text that we passed over in order to look at the figures in the text and uh, I want to return your attention right now to the endo enteroendocrine cells these are the cells from this picture over here on the next page at the uh, bottom of the pits of the stomach uh, these are the cells right here that I noted were producing gastrin. It's not the only thing that's being produced by these cells. So we have something called gut-brain hormones. Um, for instance, serotonin is normally something you think of in the brain, in our central nervous system, just like we normally think of oxytocin as being from the central nervous system, but it actually acts also in females um, at the breast level and at the uterine level. So here we have serotonin. Uh, I'm uh, convinced along with a few other scientists that I've uh, studied digestive system with uh, at the University of Texas that um, serotonin released from the stomach is, um, <laughs> is uh, what we think of as uh, getting some comfort food. Um, serotonin is very comforting, and um, at least in the brain. And since it enters the bloodstream when it comes to um, eating food here from the stomach, as soon as things get into the stomach, and it's sometimes perhaps why some people want to eat to fullness, is to stimulate a significant amount of this. These are hard questions to answer, and so I'll leave it open and uh, unsettled for you so you can think about it in your own education. So at any rate, in addition to gastrin, we have histamine as well as serotonin being released. And uh, somatostatin is also, I didn't underline it, but it's also important. Um, it's, uh, somatostatin is an inhibiting molecule normally. It inhibits growth hormone at night um, if there is any um, insulin in the body. And it inhibits growth hormone by day, definitely, because there is definitely insulin running around in the body. So uh, this is an inhibitory. It specifically turns off growth hormone in the brain, but it turns off the stomach activities, or at least it slows it or dampens it um, when the stomach is emptying too quickly and the duodenum can't handle all that acid. Okay, so that's from that moment right there. And then later in that same paragraph, but on the next page, 867, we have gastrin, it says here, a hormone uh, plays an essential role in regulating uh, stomach secretion and um, motility. It plays a role in motility. Um, and it's because of the, um, well, we'll get to that coming up. So, um, but first over here, I wanted to um, allude to the, um, homeostatic imbalance on page 869 having to do with peptic ulcers and also then gastric peptic ulcers and gastric ulcers and uh, indicate to you that it is possible to clear the mucus covering of the stomach um, particularly when we're using things like uh, aspirin and alcohol sometimes people drink alcohol have a headache take aspirin and um, so that combination is, is what is uh, implicated here. But they do say that a very large percentage of people who do then continue to suffer from gastric ulcers also have this condition, which is the infection of these particular um, uh, bacteria. There is the uh, opening in the stomach wall. And uh, H. pylori, excuse me, I'm shading myself here. H. pylori is the name of the uh, bacterium that uh, they're referring to here. Okay. H. pylori is in also the uh, caption here of that picture. That brings us over here to page 870. Okay. And it says here, the most important protein uh, digesting enzyme uh, produced uh, 
uh, by gastrin mucosa is uh, pepsin. So it says here also that in infants, however, the stomach glands also secrete renin. So I need you to have that in mind. Um, an enzyme that acts on milk products, uh, particularly casein, converting it um, to a curdy substance uh, that looks like soured milk. If uh, the child spits up curdy looking milk, uh, that's exactly what's happening, is that the milk has been solidified to some degree and now the child is in essence eating cheese in their stomach based on the mother's milk that they received. Over here on this page, um, we're again taking a look at gastrin, and it says here that uh, gastrin uh, stimulates the release of enzymes, but its main target, and I need you to understand this, is hydrochloric acid secreting parietal cells. Recall that the parietal cells uh, were the ones that were producing hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. But this is the single main target of gastrin, uh, which, is, uh, which it prods, it says, uh, to spew out uh, ever more um, hydrochloric acid. Then we come down uh, to this part of the page, and you can see that I've gotten busy here with the underlining. So this is page um, 870, uh, even, 870. And um, it says here that control of the hydrochloric um, acid secreting parietal cells is actually um, operated by three different substances. I'll let you read through that on your own uh, at the bottom of 870. Uh, if you have a different edition, take a look around and it's being discussed. Uh, ultimately, there are three things that we need to consider here. And so the um, it says... Uh, when only one of the uh, three things are named, um, let's take a look at what those three things are. Acetylcholine is one of them, okay? And then um, another one here is, um, let's take a look here, histamine. And, um, and then finally also there is gastrin. Okay, so we need to, what's called, provoke the G, the G protein. Uh, coupled receptors, so gastrin, uh, acetylcholine, and histamine. Those are the three molecules of interest here. And it says um, when uh, only one of the three chemicals binds to the parietal cells, hydrochloric secretion is scanty. Okay, you have to think of Dr. Marib actually giving this particular lecture. She's so wonderful. Um, but where all three bind, hydrochloric acid pours forth. And here, uh, in recent editions, the editor cut off the rest of the sentence. Um, <laughs> if it was Marib speaking, she would have said, it, um, it, these three uh, molecules cause hydrochloric acid to pour forth like, a, like water from a fire hose. She is very colorful in her description. Okay, so... Then uh, the next thing that we're going to be picking up here is the Cajal cells in the rhythm. I'll just mention it right here, uh, that we have a pacemaker in the stomach. And so this is over on page 873, and we'll pick that up in just a moment.